bought TikTok Shop products. Today I'm going to be showing you the reading planner for 2024 and a hundred envelope challenge. This is an unsponsored review of both of these products. The $2 bill. A to Z challenge. This sounds really fun. Boom. The only thing that I think it's missing for me. Both of these things I am so excited to share with you guys today. I am getting ready for 2024. Just from the outside, they both look like incredible quality, exactly what I paid for. I want to do a deep dive and show you all of the stuff that's inside of both of these. Let's start off with the 100 envelope savings. I do like this product here. I am very, very excited about it. This part that opens, it's magnetized, so there's no clip, it just magnetically goes back together, just like that. Also, the words right here, they are printed on. It's not a sticker, it's not gonna come off, and it also has the 100 envelope challenge right here. I ordered mine on December 18th. It arrived December 26th, so it did take a little bit of time to get to me, but to be fair, uh, that was during the holidays. TikTok shop is not Amazon Prime, so we cannot expect for our packages to get delivered in one to two days. That's just unrealistic. The subtotal for my 100 envelope savings challenge was $21.59 plus sales tax of $2.97. And I was able to get a coupon. I guess it was just coupons that TikTok shop has available on their site because I didn't track down this coupon. It was just like automatically applied. And that was for $6.48, which brought my total down to $18.08, which I think is still a pretty good deal considering what you have. You have a nicely printed binder type product here. This did come in multiple colors, and I'm really excited to start this challenge in 2024. I literally just canceled almost all of my subscriptions. I am just trying to think more towards savings in 2024 and spending less. Let's open it up and let me show you exactly what is inside this 100 envelope savings challenge. It came with three magnetic and erasable whiteboard markers. You can see the eraser up here at the top and they each have a little round magnet right there. I am excited that it came with three. I wasn't even expecting that it would come with any at all. So it was a bonus for me that it even came with any. And then when you open it up, it has the envelope stuff on the inside. You have the loose bits right here, which you can put into your planner. Ah, yes. And the envelopes are loose too. We'll go through that in a little bit and put it together. And if you've never heard of this, it is a challenge so that you can save $5,050. Now I have seen people on TikTok who are gonna try to attempt to do this twice a year. I think for me, I'll be good just to do it once and to fill up all of the envelopes one time in 2024. For the 100 envelope challenge, we have two different varieties. They give you this one with the flowers all over it. You can see it's a flowery type of design with little smiley faces on it. If you don't like that design, there is another one right here, which has smiley faces with dollar signs as eyes. So very different designs. Both of them will work and they actually are two different pieces. So you have right here, the 100 envelope challenge design. And then the second one is actually for you to fill in every time that you have filled in an envelope. It says that it belongs to, and you can also put your start date, which is very important because it'll help you keep track of how long it took you to save this money, which honestly, depending on your financial situation, there's no rush to it. You know, you don't have to feel bad because it takes you longer to fill up an envelope than it does for somebody else. Everybody's financial situation is completely different, okay? Times are hard right now. It is hard to save even a little bit. Don't let yourself feel bad because you can't fill up the entire thing quickly. I have to decide which one I'm gonna use. I kind of think I like the flowers. I like the colors that are on the flowers. I like the stars in the background. It's giving off the right vibe for me. I think it's gonna be the one that I go with. And then you have this other 100 envelope saving tracker. This was the only one that was snapped into place. And this one definitely feels a little bit more dry erase material or laminate material than the other two did. This one is just standard circles. 
you can color it in as you fill up an envelope. So it's like a third type option if you wanted to use it. Or there could be another purpose. Okay, I gotta be honest, I've seen this in the TikTok shop. I've seen some people go over it, but I've never followed anybody like filling it up all the way or filling it up multiple times. You know what I mean? And then I am excited to get these little envelopes out and open them, put them in place. We're gonna put it together. I think I do have a little bit of money that I got from Christmas that I will be able to use to fill up some of these envelopes. So that's exciting. I've got my envelopes in. I've got my challenge up here at the front. I am curious to see how well it stays once you write it on and then, you know, close it like this to see if it just wipes it away. Cause I don't have this in a different kind of protective sleeve. So let's discover that part together. This book belongs to Laura and the start date let's just put January 1st January 1 2024 like will it stay put all right let's see how that stayed because this was the biggest part I was concerned about okay it did stay after having it closed and I do have some money then I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in my envelope challenge. Again, I don't know how some people are trying to do this twice. Man, they must not have any kids with extracurriculars. That's all I can say. Or maybe they do, I don't know. All right, so you can put it in this way. And I've also seen people fold it up multiple and stuffing it in there, but I do like the aesthetic of the one. So you can see how I have the $1 bill in the one. And then here's the five. So I do have a $5 bill and I'm gonna stuff that one in the $5 pocket. <laughs> I guess my biggest concern after finishing this challenge is taking it to the bank and the government going, where'd you get all this money from? And I have a $10 bill that I can go ahead and stuff in here. And this is my number 10. And they do just slide in there pretty easily. So I do like that. Just boom. And then the last one I'm going to do today is the 20. Boom. So already I have 20, 30, 5, 36 dollars saved in my 100 envelope challenge. And I get to color in the ones that I did. And it is so satisfying to color these in. Already off to a great start for the new year. Before we move on, I just wanna show you one thing that I have, and that is the $2 bill. Now, two is my favorite number, and my mom knew that, and she was able to get me $2 bills at the bank. This was a little while ago. I don't even know if you can still get them. Maybe you can, I don't know. But I really wanna put my $2 bill in my $2 envelope. Fold it up, and those of you who have not seen a $2 bill before, this is what it looks like. And here's the back side. Don't worry, I have other $2 bills that are not bent. And just slip the $2 one into the two. Boom, there I have it. And I get to fill in right here the two dollars I gotta say so far I am impressed with the dry erase 
I have closed this twice now and have not seen this rub away. And I was a little concerned about that because it is just dry erase, which I'm glad that it's easy to take off so that you can redo this as many times as you want. I just don't wanna lose track of where I was as I'm doing the challenge, which I think is why this is here to prevent it from closing all the way. And then it has this magnet part to keep that from happening. So that's a good feature that I like about this. There you have it. Now that we have all of that sorted, I am well on my way to saving some money for 2024. My husband's gonna be so excited that we'll actually be trying to save. That's really just a little joke because honestly, we're always trying to save. It's very hard to save, especially <laughs> in today's, you know, economic climate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That is one of my goals, 2024. I wanna save hard. I mean, I also, want to save so that I can travel, but I also want to save just so that I can save. So whatever your goals are, totally recommend it. And you do not have to buy this TikTok shop product to do it. You can honestly just save however you want to. You could go find envelopes and just write your own numbers on them and fill them up and do it that way. For me, I like the whole aesthetic of the envelope saving challenge binder, but that's just me. Let's move on to this reading planner slash tracker. It is officially the 2024 reading tracker book log and reading stats designed by Novelly Yours. I love the quality of it. Love the spiral effect. The beginning and ending part of it, it's a really thick material, which I really enjoy. I feel like this will hold up for the entire year, no matter where I take it, where I keep it. I like that I won't just have pages getting bent back. We have the nice hard cover. With my OCD, that is something that tends to bother me when pages get bent or torn or damaged, especially on the front of it. I don't know why. On the back here, it does say you can visit her website, novellyyourscandles.com. I didn't even know she sold candles, so cool. Here's the QR code if you want to try to scan that. Maybe you can find this on her website instead of the TikTok shop. This is an unsponsored review of both of these products. I do have an email receipt. Whatever was on TikTok, it must have taken me to her website, and then that's how I was able to buy it. It was $29.99 so it was more expensive than the envelope challenge but I expect it to be that way because this thing is loaded with goodies $29.99 plus tax or maybe it was plus shipping because my total amount came out to $38.79 it says no taxes so that with shipping it was $38.79 it was a little bit more of a splurge I feel like there was a lot of thought that went into this reading tracker it is something that I really want to get more into this year I am not going to fill up this entire thing. I am by no means reading hundreds of books a year and I do not annotate the way that some other people annotate but it does look like something that I want to get into. Let's go through this reading tracker together and it is going to be a deep dive so I will be showing you just about everything that is in here in case you are a book lover like me who likes to track stuff like this. This may be a good product for you. There are other ones out on the market so if you do not like this particular one no worries. I'm sure you can find another one and it'll be just fine. So when you first open it up on the hardcover, she has the reading tracker terms explained and helpful hints. The terms and lingo. Backlist are older titles, usually a year old or older. TBR means to be read. DNF, did not finish. Book haul, books you bought and or received. Reread, a book you've read previously and have now read again. Standalone, a book that is an individual story and is not part of a series. It stands alone. Stats page. You have the number month and the number year. Corresponds to the books you're reading as you read them in order. Number month would be the first book you read in the month the second, etc. Number year will be a running total that carries over from the previous month so that you get a running year total as you go, which is really cool because I want to keep track of it this year. The link, number of pages and or audiobook hours slash minutes. I think audiobook might be something that I will try in 2024. I like reading physical copy books, but I do like the ease of the audiobooks, how you can listen to them and be hands-free, and I can get stuff done while I'm listening to books. That'll be a new experience for me in 2024. Source, where, how you got the book. 
Amazon publisher borrowed from the library, bought it at a local bookstore, received as a gift. Owned slash borrowed, if you own the book or if you borrowed it, I actually did borrow several books in 2023 that I had to give back. And some of them I bought for myself so that I could have them on hand to reread later. Age, the target marketed age of the book, adult, young adult, middle grade, etc. And then how to, the series tracker, record the series you read and shade in the numbers that correspond to each book in the series. Graphing pages, assign your own number increments and create your own bar graph with your reading data. So that's really cool. Can't wait to make this colorful. My goal for 2024 is to read blank books. Other yearly goals. So read, visit, review, share, recommend. I think my goal was to see if I could read even four or five books a month. Again, it's not a lot compared to people who just slam books like crazy. But I feel like that's more of a realistic goal for me, like a book a week, because with everything else I have going on with work and YouTube and kids and family life, that seems to be the amount that I can produce per week. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. So I feel like that's a good average for me. Turning the page, you have lots of different lists right here. You have anticipated new releases, books I didn't get to last year in backlist, series to finish, this year's wish list. Ooh, I could think of something for every one of those lists. I don't think I'll fill it all the way up. And then we go into the 2024 reading log. So this is just something at the very beginning. You can put the title of the book you read and then shade how many stars you think it was worth. And there's enough space for, wow, 320 books. I will never read that many books in 2024. I just really don't think it's possible, but I like that they extended it to that many for people who do have the time or who are fast enough readers that they can fit that many books in in a year. It's nice to have it all up front so you could go back to it. All right, the next page is A to Z challenge. This sounds really fun. Can you read a book starting with each letter to fill the alphabet in 2024 calendar year? I wanna do this. Fill out the challenge as you read. Having a tough time? Q, X, and Z could just appear somewhere in the title. That makes it easy. Oh, 24 and 24 reading challenge. Challenge yourself to read 24 books you already own in 2024 or 24 older titles you've been meaning to read. Track your progress. This is something that I wanted to do. I'm actually gonna be making a TBR jar that will have a list of all the books I got in book subscription boxes that I never got a chance to read. Of course, I have my very full TBR list over here just bursting with books that I just got at bookstores that were from recommendations from friends. But I honestly have so many other books in my library that I really need to try to read. And I've been wanting to pull out one book a month. Of course, that would only be 12 for me. So I don't know if I'll get to the full 24 and 24. But even if I get half of it done, I think I will be proud of myself. We'll see how 2024 goes. Okay, turning the page, you have Novel in Yours Reading Challenge. Use these random prompts to choose your 2024 reads. Complete the challenge by fulfilling all of them. Oh, a book with a long title of seven plus words, one word title, number in the title, country in the title, color in the title, recommended by friend and family. Has a TV or movie adaption outside of your comfort zone. That would be a book that is not in a genre that you normally read. Sports theme, travel theme, food theme, book with royalty, someone gets married, animal on the cover, illustrated cartoon cover, banned book published before the year 2000. That's an interesting challenge, very different from some of the others that we saw in here. Next, you have your create your own reading challenge. You can have the challenge details and then we have a grid here. Honestly, you can do whatever you want on this page. I have no idea what I'm gonna do on it but maybe something. Turn the page, we have series tracker. This is definitely something that I am going to need because I will be reading the Throne of Glass series. I will be reading the Fourth Wing series. I will be reading the Shadow and Bone series. I'm gonna be reading the Serpent and the Wings of Night series, the Caravel series, the Once Upon a Broken Hearted series, the 
Light Lark series. Man, the list goes on and on. I plan on using this series tracker. I love that it goes all the way up to seven, and then you can shade in the boxes to create your color-coded key. Red in previous years, red this year, or series completed. And then you have like, what? One, two, three, four, four pages of series trackers. Very nice. Then we have January releases. So now we're coming into like the calendar months. You can put the release date in the title, and then you have down here monthly goals, the January to be R. These are the books that you want to read that year, and then new to the wish list. That could be new recommendations that you had got or books you had heard of and you want to add it to your list. And then you have January stats. Very nice. I like how we have alternating colors between the white and the beige. That way you can keep them separate. You have the January reading stats here, monthly goal, and then total red. And then for every single book you read, you can fill out what month number, what year number, the day you started, the day you finished, the title, the author, the length. You can give your rating, what genre it was, the source of where you found it, the format, owned or borrowed book, and the targeted age for the book. If it was a young adult book, an adult book, a middle grade book. And then you have lots and lots and lots of pages. Then you come into the January DNF log. These are did not finish books. It says the title, the author, the format, the source of where you found it, the date you stopped reading it, and the number of pages you read or the percentage of the book that you read slash listened to. Also very helpful. There was actually a book that I DNF'd in December just because the writing, there was something that didn't gel with me. It did not read as quickly as it should have read for a thriller. And so I put it down and picked up another one that read a lot faster and a lot better. Whether or not I'll go back to that book I put down, I do not know as of right now. No, but maybe someday. Let's turn the page to January book haul. So this will be nice if you go to bookstores. The book, the format, the source, the price, the author, the number of books acquired, and the total amount spent. Then you have your January monthly recap. The number of books read, the total number of pages read, the audiobook minutes listened, the average rating, total DNF, total rereads, total acquired, and total new releases. Total series, total standalone, most read format, most read genre, longest read length, total number borrowed, and total number owned. Very detailed. Novelly Yours put a lot of work into this tracker. Next page, January favorites. You have title, author, just keeping it super simple, and the stars that you could fill in, whether you thought it was four stars, four and a half, you know, etc. Turn the page. You have the place where I think you could put the bar graphs. How many of the books did you read were DNF, one star, one and a half, two, two and a half, etc. Number of pages. How many books were between these many pages? Very nice. Genre. Here we have the same thing. I think all of the formats on both these pages are meant to be bar graphs so that you can get a visual representation of the results of the books that you read. Over on the right side, you have format, own slash borrowed books, or the age of the book. Remember, age is the targeted age for the audience of the book, not how long the book's been published. All right, turn the page. You have a blank bar graph system, so you can create your own. And then you come into February releases, and then it repeats everything that we just went over. After you get past December, there is some end of the year stuff. So 2024 favorite books. You can put your top 10 and a couple of runner ups. And then it says, join us for the hashtag 12 days of 2024. Wow, they have really planned this out if it's for 2024. The next page you have total number of books read, total number of pages read, average rating, total number of audio minutes, number of DNFs, number of rereads, books in a series, standalones, published in 2024, bought and acquired, most read genre, most read format, most read source, most read age range, first read of the year, date finished, last read of the year, date finished, and that's just showing your number stats. Top books in favorite genres. So you have genre one, genre two, genre three. I think my three favorite genres is fantasy, romance, and mystery 
mystery thrillers. I do also enjoy horror, science fiction, historical fiction, but I think I gravitate more towards the fantasy romance and the mystery thrillers. The next page you have favorite and notable bookish places visited, book events attended. I don't even plan on attending any events in 2024, but mostly because I don't know about them. So who knows? Other accomplishments, social media, goals reached, etc. I know that they mean book related for that, not just as in like my social media here. 2024 rating stats. So first five star read of the year, total number of star reads, five star reads, that surprised you five star read that you knew would be five stars and then you have again the ratings of 2024 wow then you have the genre stats of 2024 three most read genres three most read formats three most read sources books of the year by numbers Pick a stat, set your color key, and shade it in. The number corresponds to the reads of the year, and number one will be the first book you read this year, and so on. Assign a color key. For example, for genres green for fantasy, if your first book was a fantasy, shade it in green. At the end, you will have a fun color-coordinated grid. That is interesting. There's another one, and this one is also from 1 to 384. There's another page for you to do that, and then we've come to the end. On the very very back we have coupons free shipping on orders over $75 which is good the first three months of 2024 save 15% in your order total 15 off in 2024 take $5 off your order total this business owner thought well in advance when planning out 2024 as I mentioned here this is a wonderful reading tracker I love all the detail that is in it all of the different areas for you to create bar graphs and to use colors and all the different things that you typically want to know. The only thing that I think it's missing for me is there's no real space to put your favorite quotes or to put little notes of what you thought of the book. I actually find that a little odd that it's not in here because I've seen that in most every single tracker that I have. I actually have another reading tracker that is not year specific and I think I'm going to use it and fill that out for in general since I've been on this reading journey, this is everything that I've read. And since it's not year specific, I can just have it go on for multiple years until I get it filled up. That one, it does have a space for quotes and thoughts about the book. That is something that I do like to do and there's no space to do that in this one. Novelly yours, that would be the only thing I would add more to your reading tracker is just a little bit of a space in between when filling out all those stats to fill in a couple of lines of your thoughts on the book because the thoughts on the book are very important. It's not just about how much you read or how many minutes you listened to, what genre it was. It's also about how the books were that you read. And I know this has a spot for us to fill in the stars, but why is it three stars? Why was it five stars? You know, having a spot for us to remember or to write down for anybody else to see why we rated it that specific rating would be a good idea for future reading trackers. Just putting that out there. Other than that, I am actually really, really happy with my reading tracker. I am really excited to get started in 2024 and filling it out. That was a lot to go through, guys. That was seriously so much to go through. Tell me in the comments which one you were most excited about the 100 Envelope Savings Challenge or the reading tracker. I absolutely love both. I love that I'm getting ready for 2024 in this way with savings and books in mind. Although sometimes those don't go hand in hand because let's be honest, books cost money. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Bye everyone.